Hi, this is Oliver Lucanus from Below Water. Today I want to have a look at the smallest plecos in the world, the many genera that are not autosynclus. Autosynclus have long been popular in the aquarium, even though only a handful of the 20 species are available in the hobby. Instead, let's look at all the weird genera that are related to the family Hippoptopomatidine. We won't even pronounce them all, but here they are, scrolling across the screen. 28 genera and over 250 species. You will notice that there are a bunch that we've never even seen in the aquarium. Otosynclus were among the first tropical catfish ever exported, so we are looking at 100 years of fish keeping with only around 10 or 15 species of all these fish known to us. The common thread among all these odd fish is the flow in their natural habitat. While the habitat itself greatly differs from the main branch of the mighty Amazon and the Rio Xingu and tiny or mid-sized rainforest streams, there is always extreme current. It is this dynamic, extremely oxygen-rich environment that our small plecos prefer, and also the reason they are so rarely seen in export shipments. Many of them just do not transport well. Besides being difficult to transport, many of these fish are also exceedingly difficult to capture. They will swim through fine nets, and fine nets are not only difficult to use in high current, they also get caught on the branches and complex substrates these fish live on. Imagine looking for these tiny parotosynclus or cucolonichtes in this kind of environment. What we have learned from nature is the principal guideline for keeping these fish in the aquarium. The most important factor is a high oxygen saturation and strong current. Also, consider to find out where the species occurs to get the temperature right. The species from the Atlantic coast rivers of Brazil, such as the commonly exported Parotosynclus haroldoi, are actually the easiest, and they get exported more often, and are quite reasonable in price, unlike the fish from the really remote places. Like the tiny Hisonotus aquin, this fish can be green or it can be red, depending if you get it on these long-stemmed green plants or on the white silica sand and laterite gravels. This is a spectacular fish, but just to get to this place is several days of driving and the fish is never common in these places. Too far for such a small fish that, on top of it, is then difficult to catch and transport and won't handle the heat in the journey back. That is why it's so rare and to see this kind of fish in captivity all of these fish feed actively throughout the day, and most will do fine with algae, if the aquarium is large enough, supplemented by flake foods and sinking pellets. Always remember that these fish easily get outcompeted by any other fish, and can easily starve to death if there is not enough algae-covered surfaces in the aquarium. In the 1990s, we spent some time trying to collect 30 or 40 of the beautiful Parotosynclus epley in a creek just outside the town of Puerto Ayacucho in Venezuela. Even with the help of skilled local fishermen, the small catfish proved to be extremely difficult to catch. They would go through most nets, and the fine nets were difficult to maneuver in the high current. They would either become too heavy because of the water rushing into the net, or simply tear on the branches close to the surface. Once caught, the small power to sinkless did not like being removed from the cooler, oxygen-rich water in the jungle creek and needed to be packed one per tiny bag in a cooler with ice in order to survive the trip home. Between their habitat at 24 degrees centigrade and the air temperature at 32 degrees centigrade was simply too much for the small fish to handle. This dependence on high oxygen levels is common with many species in all of these genera. Many of these fish love sitting on the green plants, of course, and that is one thing we can easily mimic in the aquarium. Algae growing on Valisneria, Sagittaria, and many smaller Echinodorus sort plants are ideal to keep these little plecos feeding throughout the day. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching.